Welcome to our talk. And my name is Vishal Zado and meet my colleague Pablo Ortega. Uh, we are both software engineers working on interesting data challenges at Bloomberg. Uh, in short, this is a talk about how we make the Trino uh, and in general, like, you know, the Trino catalogs highly available and how it is an evolving data mesh, like basically our journey and how it became like a data mesh essentially. Um, so uh, this is some details about us, but all it says like we, re we are very cool developers and we are you know, starting a cool club here. <laughs> so, uh, so now let, let's come back to like, you know, the Trino catalogs, like you know, on, uh, what our team does at Bloomberg. So we started with a small group called New Energy Finance, and essentially, like you know, uh, during our journey, we figured out like you know what really users, the end users prefer is they want to have their data set or data catalog available all the time, and that's why we say like you know catalogs is our the data catalogs or Trino catalogs are our team's main offering. So when we started our work, we started with a small group called. Uh, New Energy Finance. These are like the domain experts in New, in new Energy, which basically uh, means like these guys uh, use standard Bloomberg data. Uh, they download or like use some external data or some experimental data from somewhere else, and also get vendor data. And then they have these ideas and intuitions. That's how their work starts. And using those ideas and intuitions, they come up with some analytical models. And the, their analytical models are based off of technologies like Excel, or it could be Python, or it could be MATLAB. And eventually what they really do is they produce some insights into financial world, right? And those insights are come in the form of like, let's say data sets, or they come into form of some kind of reports with visualizations. And it's pretty like, you know, similar uh, kind of like requirement all across the financial industry and every other industry. Like you know, every company is becoming kind of like a data company. They want to find the new insights from different data sets which they generate. So this is very typical of like you know, any other uh, base, uh, industry and any other department within the company. So that's what we figured out. And then before we know, uh, there's like some, every other group uh, inside Bloomberg who has their own analysts doing the same kind of work. And then everybody is trying to, in a way, like, you know, tries to access the data from some other group, all the standard data, which is refined by some other group. And we, before we know, like, we already in a land of like, data mesh, right? So, and then currently, like, the way it works is like, Bloomberg is a very like, a, a traditional company in a sense, since like you know, we have developed our own technologies in house, we have our own data services. So there are a lot of different ways people can go across these boundaries and access the data. So essentially, we have an evolving solution for this data mesh, and it's been evolving for quite a bit. So now, here comes Commander Bunman, and it helps us with a couple of things, right? And it, it does it pretty well. Number one is it gives us a federated data access. And number two, it gives access via SQL. And SQL is pretty much like very uh, uh, kind of like a favorite language between analysts or among them analysts. So now these guys can access their data sets, data, data, data catalogs using one federated SQL URL and also through SQL itself, right? So this essentially kind of like is our new way of doing the things now, starting with a couple of groups. And with that, like you know, Bloom, uh, Bloomberg is using Trino for some time like with these few groups. But now there are certain limitations with uh, the Trino which comes out of the box or just the Trino and its cluster, like one single cluster, right? And those are basically, um, it does authentication pretty well. But at the same time, like, you know, we want to control the access, so we need the authorization layer. For that, like, you know, Pablo will show a demo uh, and uh, some other parts also. And also, like, you know, your data uh, catalogs, the Trino catalogs should be highly available. And the reason for that is, uh, end of the day, like, you know, they just, end users really want to make sure that, like, they are able to access their data sets 
and their data catalogs all the time. And from the organization's perspective, or even from the user's perspective, uh, we want them to be auditable so that we can find some uh, uh, reasons, like you know, why someone accessed some data set, or like, you know, when they access, like what really happened on the cluster. So having said that, I will hand it over the details how we do those things uh, to Pablo. Cool. Thank you, Vishal. So those are all some pretty cool requirements, and they are key to actually allowing us to move towards data mesh and to use some of these technologies. That is, of course, easier said than done, right? Uh, as we all know, high availability authorization, they're all the end goals, but they are not particularly simple. It, it's not a button that you press, and then you're all of a sudden highly available. So one of them is uh, high availability, a topic that has already been mentioned today. And there are many cases in which your Trino cluster can go down, right? Trino is a great piece of software, but no piece of software is perfect. Your coordinator might crash. It's a single point of failure at that point. You might have network issues, uh, infrastructure issues, CPUs might crash, I don't know. ECC memory might not work, whatever it is. You might also suffer from uh, noisy neighbors. Some of your tenants might want to get high throughput at the expense of some latency, whereas others might want to get low latency, but they only are dealing with a few hundred rows. And putting all of this together uh, to keep your high availability where no one is stepping on each other's jobs is not that simple. Um, and of course, we also have the case of cluster upgrades. When you have to upgrade your cluster, you at some point need to take down the Trino coordinator and then, well, all bets are off unless you have a way to move people away. And the more that people use a data mesh and the more that people use Trino, of course, a higher level of reliance that they have on these systems to always be up and to always be functioning. So of course, as the thing goes, the way to solve it is by adding an extra level of indirection, or at least that is a way that we have done it so far. So when it comes to making sure that we retain uh, that we make sure that the cluster is always available, uh, we have the Trino load balancer. And this is a fork of the open source Presto Gateway, which you might have heard of. Presto Gateway has some pretty cool features. It has things like insight into the state of the cluster. It knows how many queries are running, how many of them are running on what cluster, how many of them are pending, when they were sent, what users send them, etc. It also allows you to configure the routing based on certain parameters. So you can do it based on the source user, based on the catalog, uh, based on the health of the cluster, whatever it is. Now, this load balancer brings in the same things that we know and love from Trino, which is your abstraction, right? You don't need to know how to talk to your database. You don't need to know what SQL endpoint to use. Uh, Trino handles that for you. This brings that same level of indirection for Trino clusters. You get a single entry point, and it transparently routes users to one cluster or another. And we can control when a cluster goes off for maintenance or whatever it is. So for that, we have worked to add some extra features. So we have added the TCP connectivity rule. So as part of your configuration, you can decide um, to not route to a cluster if there are certain TCP checks that are not passing. So you can define what port that is. For instance, if you have an iceberg catalog and your meta store is not available, you might want to route it to another cluster even if the Trino itself is working. Um, we also have worked on adding authentication and authorization using OAuth. Again, Trino for us is using OAuth. It only makes sense to have the load balancer do the exact same thing so that people don't have repeat, uh, duplicate usernames for everything. Easy navigation to the cluster running a query. So just from the UI, you can click on a query, and it will take you to what cluster is actually running it. And retaining of privacy. So when you log in into the load balancer, you see what queries are running, on, but only for those that you have submitted and not for anyone else, unless you're an admin, and then you can see everything. Now, those two points on the UI go towards a goal that we have, which is making everything have more insight. So Bloomberg has already contributed a um, query log um, feature into Trino, where it will publish events as they are happening, or event log, I don't remember what we called it. But it's publishing events as they happen into a message queue, and then you can get them for insight and to know what is going on, what queries are running, how many resources they are using. So on that same goal, having this UI show you on the load balancer is just another small step towards that end goal of making everything more accessible. So just to show you an example, this is what it would look like. So you have your interactive user and, uh, for example, an ETL job, which would be the perfect example of a noisy neighbor, someone that might be using a lot of resources. They both talk to the same load balancer. The load balancer uses its rules and its connectivity checks to determine what, which of these Trino clusters to route your request to. 
And of course, high availability is only one of the requirements that we mentioned. We also have all of these other things. Uh, so we have authorization. Uh, for that reason, we run Trino together with Apache Ranger to determine what catalogs, what users can access. And these rules can be pretty granular. They can be uh, from as high as you're saying, OK, these users have access to the whole catalog, but we can go down to the row level if we really wanted to. But the most important part is that that is up to the data owners. So we don't want to be in the business. We, as in our team, doesn't need to be in the business of deciding who has access to your data, because we don't know it. We just maintain the platform. So in that sense, the policies are flexible, but they are managed by the data owners and not by us. It's all integrated with enterprise directories via LDAP. Again, not just a load balancer, but Trino itself, Ranger. Uh, we want users to have the same login across the board. The one thing we don't want is for someone to have different passwords everywhere, and then for whatever reason, one of these gets leaked, and then you have a lot of places where you have to change it. Yes, single password, single sign-on, uh, single place to put everything. And traceability, same thing. UI uh, in the load balancer allows you to see it. But not just that, the query audit log um, allows us to get all the insight into what queries are running, how many resources they are using. So we have a quick demo. Um, I, just one thing to mention is that this is just a simple demo for the purposes of showcasing the features. Uh, of course, we don't quite run things in the exact same way at Bloomberg, but most of them are the same, like most of the overall assumptions. Uh, so all, uh, for what we're going to show today, LDAP is our source of truth. We have two users, limited user and super user. Both are part of a single LDAP group called Trino users. Ranger is used to manage uh, the policies, and it syncs with LDAP. And Trino also authenticates through LDAP. And as our starting point, we want to allow all the users in that LDAP group to describe all the schemas, see what is available, but deny all access by default. And the other thing that we want to do is the super user wanted to allow it to do whatever it needs, just again for sake of argument to show you today. While we only allow limited user to read from that tpcds.sf1.call center, it's one of the built-in data set names. I know it's not very easy to pronounce on stage, but let's <laughs> keep that in mind uh, if we can move to the laptop. Thank you. So of course, I got locked out. So I have everything running on my laptop. It's part of a single Docker Compose file. Um, so I can see that I have configured the Trino service here. And we have some policies. Um, these policies are pretty simple. All that we know is that Trino users group is allowed to do pretty much all of the standard listing and describing operations. And I will zoom in for one of them, I promise. Um, so here we have information schema. That, gr uh, that user group can select whatever it wants here, so that it can describe all the tables, all the schemas within it. But there is no other rule targeting Trino users. The only rule that's here is on that table that, again, doesn't have the catchiest of names. So the rule that we have allows that user to do a select, a use, and a show uh, for any user on this group on that table and that table only. We have a global rule for super user to do whatever it wants. So at that point, here, I have two Trino CLIs. The one on the left is uh, talking as a limited user. So I can say, uh, show catalogs. And you can see that I have them there. So I can say, use tpcds.sf1. And I can say, show tables. So here, we have all of those tables. If I try to select star from catalog page, I am not privileged. I'm running as limited user. There is no rule to allow me to access that. And as we said, by default, we want to deny everything. If super user tried the exact same thing, use tpcds.sf1, and I say select star from catalog page limit one. There we go. Now, again, the other rule that we had actually does allow me to describe stuff. So I can describe it, of course, if I can type it. Um, but I cannot select it. And the one rule that we did have was to read from call center. And that is one thing that limited user can do. So there we go. Limited user can do that. If I went to another catalog, again, I would have the exact same issue. There is no rule to allow limited user to do anything other than describe stuff and select from this one table. And for the load balancer piece, so here I'm actually talking to two Trino clusters. And here we can see what it's doing. So here I can see that super user 
using Trino CLIs, running show catalogs. One of these requests has gone to Trino Region 1, the other one has gone to Trino Region 2. Again, just two containers running in a Docker Compose. Limited user has been doing, again, all the stuff that you have seen me do just now, so selecting, show tables, whatever, and you can see that it has been going to the two different endpoints. You can see them here. If I take one of these on offline, then it would stop, so I could just come here and disable it. But also as part of the rules of YAML file that the Presto Gateway uses, if you've heard of it, um, now there is an option to create a TCP check, um, which would just allow you to do more granular stuff. Whoops. So here you have an example. Um, here I can say, if it's for catalog check and there is a TCP check that succeeds to one of my endpoints, then uh, on port 8080, then add it to that routing group. That, that TCP check is what would allow us to do stuff a bit more granularly for external dependencies and that sort of thing. Uh, if we can go back to the slides. So yeah, these were screenshots in case it didn't work. Um, I mean, you have to prepare for the demo effect, right? Um, so yeah, putting it all together, the load balancer allows us to maintain high availability. Federated access allows data owners to retain control of their data sets. And data security is a first level commitment for us. We want to have authentication and traceability. And all of that is using well-known open source components like Ranger, Trino, and a fork of the open source Presto Gateway. So with all of that, thank you very much. Uh, we are also hiring. So if you're interested, please come talk to us or go to the careers website.